We're only two weeks into 2024, and we might have our first Game of the Year contender. And no, before you say it, this isn't some hyperbolic attention gainer in order to get you to continue watching this video. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is incredible in many ways, and it is the best addition to the franchise since the sands of time. What's up everybody, it's Rivtech. Welcome to the first video of 2024. This is my review of The Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. If you're a fan of action RPGs and Souls-like, then you've come to the right place. I have builds, guides, strategies, and more. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Subscribing is the best way to support this channel. And by the end of the video, if you found it helpful or entertaining, make sure to hit that like button. Going back to the franchise's roots, The Lost Crown is a Metrovania 2D side-scroller. And just like a lot of games in the genre, it has some Souls-like elements too. But don't worry, this definitely feels like a Prince of Persia game. The story revolves around Sargon, the warrior of the Immortals, an elite group of Persian soldiers. The Immortals are sent to Mount Kaf on a mission to find the kidnapped prince and discover the mysteries of Mount Kaf. Since this is a spoiler-free review, I won't go too much into the story. But being vague, I found it to be pretty solid. As you progress through the game, you'll find new weapons and get the ability to upgrade them through the blacksmith. You'll be able to fine-tune your playstyle through the game's amulet system. Amulets grant you new abilities and buffs. For instance, the ability to recover health after a successful parry, you can increase your max health, you can increase your melee damage in the air, or give yourself more arrows for your bow. Each amulet comes at a cost, so you're going to have to choose wisely what your point allocation. Sargon also has unique special abilities known as Athra Surges. Think of Athra Surges as Sargon's ultimate abilities. Each ability has a different cooldown time, and they are activated by performing a perfect parry. Each surge has its own stylistic animation, and they all look awesome. The game's combat system is honestly the selling point for me. The controls feel fluid and responsive, and something that I'm really big on is parrying, and the parry system in this game feels great. With the addition of Sargon's bow, the game allows for a variety of different ways to approach every fight. You can hack and slash, duck and dodge, counterattack, use your bow, create all sorts of mix-ups. Really, creativity is your only limit. The game also has a good variety of enemies. As with many other games in the genre, each enemy requires a certain way of approaching the fight. For shield enemies, for instance, you have to sneak behind them. For aerial enemies, you have to attack them with your bow. Some enemies require you to counterattack them with a parry, so it's not a complete hack and slash. Mount Kos level design is impressive. The settings are designed beautifully and are uniquely challenging. While many of the obstacles are something that you've probably seen in other games before, they are very well executed. They require finesse, timing, patience, and sometimes a well thought out strategy in order to complete. Plus, it's a really awesome feeling to make it through an entire run of an area without taking any damage. Speaking of challenging, the game has a lot of puzzles. It wouldn't be a Prince of Persia game without them. Sargon uses his bow to fire a special disc that hits targets and activates hidden platforms. You can also use your sword, air dash, and wall jumping abilities to progress through the levels. Another thing that this game does incredibly well is exploration. I know that may sound counterintuitive for a side scroller for people who are now accustomed to open worlds being the standard for most action adventure games. However, The Lost Crown makes you want to explore every nook and cranny of Mount Kaf, making sure that you got every item. I found myself constantly trying to perform crazy jumps in order to reach different places or sliding under things that I thought would access different areas of the map. I had a huge fear of missing out. Because I play so many games on this channel, I don't normally take the time to go and fully explore everything unless it's for an item that I specifically want. However, in this game, I always felt like there was something more in specific areas that I had to go explore. And you'll do a lot of exploring. The game's maps are absolutely massive. Unless you're a true perfectionist, you'll probably make it through the entire game without exploring every single part of the map. A feature that this game includes that I really liked is the ability to take screenshots of certain things that you can't reach or you may want to explore later on. This feature is super convenient if you're a completionist, you have a fear of missing out like me, or you don't have a, the ability to access a certain part of the map at a certain time. If you're curious about the game's completion time, you're looking at about 22 hours to complete just the main story. If you're going to do side quests, add another hour and a half onto that. And if you're a completionist, it's going to take you roughly 27 hours. This is according to howlongtobeat.com. Obviously, it's important to keep in mind that these numbers are based on people who had early access to the game and will change once the game goes full release. 
Speaking of full release, the game will be available on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, Switch, and on PC. If you're a PC player like me, keep in mind that this game is not available on Steam. So that means that you're going to have to settle for using the Epic Game Launcher or using Ubisoft Connect in order to purchase and play the game. This is always an issue that's brought up in the PC world with the way that Ubisoft operates by not letting Steam have access to the game on release. It's especially unfortunate for people who own a Steam Deck because this game is perfect for the Steam Deck. This is a full price game coming in at 60 US dollars for the standard edition and 70 US dollars for the deluxe edition. There is a high level of replayability in this game, especially if you enjoy the exploration, you're a completionist, or if you're a person who likes a challenge, you can do no hit runs of this, you can do no death runs, you can do speed runs of the game, lots of possibilities with it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is already a 2024 game of the year candidate. I also predict that with the success of this game, there's going to be a lot more Metrovania games popping up in the future. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown went back to its roots of what made this franchise successful. The choice to go back to a side-scroller instead of making an open-world game really paid off. I really enjoyed the art style, and since this is a 2D side-scroller, I didn't mind the graphics. I actually thought they were pretty good. The fluidity of combat, the fear of missing out exploration, and the level design make this game a must-have. The replayability of it justifies the full price. Now, if you don't want to get it because it's not on Steam, then I highly recommend if you have a console to go that route. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please make sure to hit the like button. Also, if you're not subscribed, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you've played the game, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about it, or leave me a comment letting me know whether or not you plan on playing the game. I also stream on YouTube, so if you're interested in watching me play Prince of Persia or any other action, adventure, or Souls-like game in the future, make sure to check it out. And a final overall rating, I give this game a 9 out of 10. I've been RivTech, thanks for watching.